you know, if you want love in your life, you, you can't sit here and say that you want love, that you want a relationship, that you want a partnership and whatnot, whatever, but then be afraid to put yourself out there. Like, I get it. Nobody wants to get hurt. But if you're going to leave your be vulnerable enough to allow yourself to be open to love, then you're going to naturally put leave yourself open to potentially get hurt. You're not going to not walk around your apartment just because you're afraid of stubbing your toe. Hello everyone <laughs> welcome to morning coffee thank you guys so very much for tuning in so this is going to be your weekend edition yes it's so, it, it's like it's so crazy that you know I, I get to say all this again I don't know I'm just I'm so thrilled to be doing morning coffee again here for YouTube so yay um, <clears throat> so happy Friday I hope you guys had a good week. I hope you guys have a good weekend. I'm just getting some sage on our cards here just to reset the energies. Can I tell y'all something? I have had this phone now since May of last year. And I've been shooting videos on it for 10 months now, 11 months now. No, 10. Yeah, because next month is going to, oh, whoa, next month is May. Whoa, okay, anyway. Um, <laughs> uh, and I just now figured out how to put by the, the the frame rate at 60 frames per second. Like, and it's cool, too. Like, it's such, I'm so used to, like, just the, the regular 30 that it was set to, like, like factory settings. Excuse me, factory settings. So now I'm, like, watching this, and it's like, whoa, this is, like, ultra real right now. <laughs> <laughs> Don't mind me, I'm silly. But anyway, I hope you guys are doing well. So I have a little bit of more news to share with you guys. Um, I am in the process of getting some merchandise set up. Uh, the first thing is an official morning coffee mug. I know we've been waiting for that for a long time. Um, I'm really excited about that. I got um, a friend of mine here on the island developed a new logo for me, which is so cool. Um, and we're gonna work with that moving forward. So I'm working on making some um, mugs, of course. And then I think I'm definitely gonna do like maybe some masks, you know, if anybody wants to wear a, an official Divine Conversation mask while you're out and about. Um, T-shirts, hoodies, all kinds of stuff. Um, um, I'm ha actually having a lot of fun developing it. It's It's, Really, I spent a good few hours yesterday just sitting there, just fleshing out ideas. So I'm really excited about that. So look out for that uh, coming within, well, actually, I don't know exactly how long it's going to be. I just heard myself say within like the next few weeks, um, I need to, I want to fin finalize the designs. And then I think I'm going to have to, um, I'm going to want to order some samples just to see. And then the shop will be all set up. Everything's going to be online. Um, and once I get that set, I will get you guys the link and we can have some official Divine Conversations merch. Yes, I'm super excited about that. So anyway, um, let's get into this. This is going to be your weekend edition of Morning Coffee. But keep in mind that this is a timeless reading. Yes, so this can resonate for you whenever. Um, and it's also a general reading. Yeah, so please take what resonates and leave what doesn't. Let's get into this. So we're using the same decks today. We've got Turomucha as our main deck. And then we have the Los Carabello as our, uh, cl our clarifier. And then depending on how the situation goes, um, you know, we're going to get some Oracle guidance at the end. But other than that, I might dive into some other decks if I feel called to. Yeah? All right, cool. So... <laughs> Let's get into today's message, yeah? See what we've got in the cards for us. Two J skis. Okay. Please make me a clear channel for the collective at this time. 
please bring forward the best messages to serve their highest good and the highest good of all involved. Please give us clear and accurate representations of the energies in, in terms of the situations, situationships, circumstances, and places in which we all need it the most. Thank you so very much, Spirit. All righty, kids. Let's see what we've got going on today, yeah? What do we want to talk about today? We're going to give this five shuffles. <laughs> One. Happy Friday, guys. This is two. Whoop. Let's try that again. This is two. For the collective, what do we want to talk about? This is three. What do we want to talk about today? This is four. And this is five. All right, y'all. So. What do we got going on this weekend? What do we want to talk about? What's going on in our lives right now? This weekend or at any moment. Doesn't really matter. It's timeless reading. What have we got going on? Okay. Okay. At the bottom of the deck, you do have the Two of Swords. At the Underneath the Two of Swords is the Ace of Pentacles, but then you have the Nine of Pentacles under that. So I feel like... Hmm. Hold on. Oh, yes. Okay. Yeah. So, um... Please excuse the sniffles. Uh... How do I, how do I want to say this? Somebody is, somebody is standing in their own way. You have the two of swords at the bottom of the deck, which is, in this case, is talking about denial, okay? Um, it looks like somebody's trying to make you an offer. Somebody wants to start something, somebody wants to, and this could be, I don't know, could this be business? This could be business. I do feel like a little bit of a creative vibe here. Um, maybe a little bit of an entrepreneurial vibe. Either this is business or this is love and romance. Take it as it resonates, okay? Because underneath this Ace of Pentacles is this Nine of Pentacles energy. And this Nine of Pentacles energy is um, standing on your own. I just feel someone is being, I feel like someone is being too standoffish. And they're being too standoffish. Um, and why let this out on one hand? And on the other hand, they're wondering why shit recycles like this all the time that's literally what i just heard like why why does this situation or why does this energy keep recycling in my life well seven of cups wheel of fortune okay but i can tell you why this cycle is recycling over and over and over again and no it's not necessarily because of this two of swords the two of swords is a byproduct the two of swords is a byproduct of this the Queen of Swords. So someone is being too standoffish here. And what I uh, automatically, what I want to say is with this Seven of Cups energy, um, there are some things that you need to figure out for yourself, or there are some things that, some items that you need to deal with. I'm, I'm, I'm feeling like the Seven of Cups here is, is speaking to emotional baggage. And these are things, these are parts of your reality um, that you are... I guess I want to say that you are choosing to leave behind without dealing with them properly. And the only, the only really, the only real way that I feel like you could deal with them is to face them. I feel like the problem here is that you're not facing the baggage and the cycle 
keeps running over and over again. People come up to you. People want to approach you. People, I'm hearing people want to be nice to you. Ugh, okay. Um, and yet, it's like a, it's, <laughs> it's like a, a, a wash and repeat cycle. Like rinse and repeat. You know, it's, it's kind of what I want to say. I might even want to call this the the title of this reading rinse and repeat and it's all because of this this energy here this queen of swords being super critical um being very standoffish very guarded and i would understand because the queen of swords i mean you don't you don't necessarily get to the queen of swords energy without having been through some shit for the most part right so i get it but There is a strong sense of independence here that I feel like is impeding your progress, whether that be career. Um, and if this, you know, like, if this is business, it feels like somebody here needs to be able to work with others. Again, I understand if in, you know, in your job, in your, your, um, your career environment or whatever, I understand that maybe you've gotten fucked over by other pe by people in the past. Um, but, um, but there comes a point where you're going to have to work with others. Like, I, I mean, I, I, I get that energy. I'm, I'm very, I'm a very independent person. I'm very Aries. You know, my sun sign is Aries in the sidereal system. And that's what I really resonate with. But because of that, I often push people away saying, you know what? Don't worry about it. I'll just handle it myself for various reasons. But there comes a certain point where I, I actually need to reach out to somebody and say, hey, can you help? Case in point, getting a new logo done. Like, I'm not, I, I couldn't, I cannot draw to save my life, y'all. <laughs> okay. And I definitely am not a graphic artist. So I need to, to reach out to others and say, hey, could you help me flesh out a new logo or whatnot? You know what I mean? So, okay. Um... And then the same, I mean, it also kind of applies if we're talking about love here. Um, you know, if you want love in your life, you're going to have to open up. One of the things that I've been saying to a very good friend of mine recently, you know, we talk a lot and we talk about love and all this stuff. It, it's like you, you can't sit here and say that you want love, that you want a relationship, that you want a partnership and whatnot, whatever, but then be afraid to put yourself out there. Like, I get it, nobody wants to get hurt. But if you're going to leave your, be vulnerable enough to allow yourself to be open to love, then you're going to naturally put, leave yourself open to potentially get hurt. And I, I used to explain it this way also, you're not gonna not walk around your apartment just because you're afraid of stubbing your toe. And I mean, that may seem trivial, but think about it. When you really get down to the nitty gritty of why, so, why people act the way certain ways, you know, it, 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 when you really think about it, and if you're really gonna be in this independent energy, this nine of pentacles energy, you have to keep in mind that the way people approach you or the way people treat you is a direct reflection of where they are in their life and most likely how they treat themselves in life, right? So it's not about being overly defensive like this because you don't want to get hurt because you have all kinds of baggage. It's more about facing that baggage and clearing it up so that you can end this cycle, this drama over and over again. That's Bobby. Bobby, what are you doing out there? It's one of my neighbor's dogs. Adorable dog. And now he's out there causing trouble. <laughs> anyway, um, I, I don't exactly remember where I was going with that. But what I want to say now is you're going to end up being so much happier if you were to just face the baggage. And in many cases, be honest with yourself, because I'm also kind of feeling like this Queen of Swords energy is defensive to the point where I just want—I wanted to say defensive to a fault. Like you're going to have to, if you really want to heal from the baggage, not only do you have to face it, but you're also going to have to be real with yourself and be really truly honest with yourself about 
what you allowed into your life. Now, I'm not trying to I'm not trying to shame anybody. I'm not trying to put anybody down, and I'm definitely not trying to say that somebody else's actions are yours to blame or uh, you will take the blame for somebody's actions. No, but you do have responsibility in recognizing that at a certain level you allowed that into your life. And if you don't want that in your life any longer, then you have to take the steps to own that. I'm hearing also to fess up to it and then not allow it into your life any longer. So this Queen of Swords energy, yes, could come in handy. But not in the way that it's being used right now. Because it's an overly defensive energy and it's not coming from that, from that much of a healthy place. It's healthier to look at the situation, see it for what it is, and take your own responsibility what, and, and own whatever it is you're responsible for. And then use this Queen of Swords energy to keep any of that from coming back into your life. But using it to keep all people away or all potential offers away at bay because you're just so good on your own, you don't need nobody, that's not healthy. That's denial. Okay, let's pause for a second. Okay, let's get one more pull from this deck to continue the story, and then we will move on to some clarification, yeah? So, next chapter in the story. What else? Okay, we're going to stop right there. We do have the Six of Pentacles at the bottom of the deck now. So, yes, this is all about reciprocity, and I, I get it. Um... I definitely feel the energy here of someone being like, well, you know what, if y'all ain't going to do right by me, then you're just not going to be a part of my existence, period. And I get that. So that is somewhat healthy. I just feel like there is a, a sense of spite or vindictiveness here, but it's coming from a place of being hurt. Yep. This feels like, I'm going to tell you what these cards are, but, but from what I'm feeling right now, it feels like somebody feels as if other people have turned them into like a devil or like a demon or something. It's like that good girl gone bad type of situation. You know what I mean? Where you had this, you had this really sweet, innocent soul that was out there doing what, doing whatever, you know, and then all, and then life circumstances just twisted them up inside. And now I'm hearing things like I'm a shell or they're a shell of the person that they used to be or they're a fraction of the person that they used to be. And I get that. But this is a little bit, I'm not going to lie, you guys, this is a little confusing. What you have now is the Nine of Swords, Death, the Devil but then the Ten of Cups. And I f what I feel like is going on here is instead of using, I'm hearing, I'm hearing wasting time. Instead of using this time to face the devil, face your fears and go through the transformation that comes with it, that then ultimately leads you to the Ten of Cups, someone is just stuck here. Not even, not even. It's just stuck here. Nine of Swords and the Devil. But I feel like if you really were to face this and go through the transformation that would come from, I'm hearing owning your responsibilities. That's when this energy, this Ten of Cups energy will start to flow for you. And this Ten of Cups doesn't necessarily feel like a relationship right away. It feels like just a cascade of happiness, contentment, feeling free, feeling fresh even. Like I'm literally seeing a beautiful waterfall of just bliss and happiness. And this is this really is more, so okay, maybe this is not necessarily an actual offer that's trying to be made by a person. Like let's go on a date or let's partner up in this business sense, whatnot, whatever. This also, what the Ace of Pentacles now, that, that came out earlier, what the Ace of Pentacles is kind of talking about now is being offered an opportunity to free yourself from the burdens of the past. But the thing that I'm getting from this is that 
somebody is afraid somebody is afraid to accept their shadow side or is afraid to face their shadow side because I feel like there could be a lot of skeletons in the closet or at least you are seeing it in a way that there are a lot of skeletons in the closet and it's better to just not go in there because who knows what's going to happen well I mean from a purely egoic self-preservation point of view I guess so but ultimately the message here is you're going to be much happier much clearer much safer even if you were to just open up that closet and let everything just fall out and then pick through it one by one you have to face it you have to otherwise it's going to haunt you forever right okay i'm being called to move to clarity now so let's give this five shuffles here and first thing i want to talk about is the queen of swords yeah one. Two. Three. Four. And five. Alrighty, so let's talk about this Queen of Swords energy. Yes? What does this Queen of Swords do? Okay. Alright, at the bottom of the deck you do have the Nine of Cups. So the Nine of Cups here is talking about a comfort zone. And I, I don't know, now I'm kind of feeling like, okay, well, fine, if you're happy here, then be happy here. I mean, I don't, I don't know what, to t what else to tell you, what else to say. However, if you're here watching this and this resonates for you, then I feel like there is a message coming through that you need to work through whatever this is. But... But I understand, you know, being in your comfort zone here. I get it. It's much easier to be in this place than it is to be strong enough to be vulnerable and put yourself out there. Okay. But what's also clarifying this Queen of Swords is justice with the Knight of Pentacles. And so what this is what this feels like to me here is slowly but surely you're going to reach a sense of justice but there's still there's still something that needs to be faced otherwise the cycle the the cycle the cycle is going to keep going over and over again let's talk about the wheel of fortune here what's this wheel of fortune here please the queen of wands And the Knight of Swords. That, I'm not going to lie, guys. That feels a little contradictory. The Magician. The Magician. The Queen of Wands. But then the Knight of Swords. It's almost as if you're manifesting these situations just to cut them down. Like, you're in alignment with it. But then, yeah, but then the Queen of Swords energy comes through and just kind of like fights it off. Knight of Swords. This is confusing. Okay, so then let's talk about the Seven of Cups here. I really hope this is making sense because this, because this is like so confusing to me. <laughs> seven of Cups, what's the Seven of Cups then? What's this baggage? There's the Ten of Cups again. Somebody is afraid to be happy. The moon. Yep. Yep, 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 yep. Okay. You do have the star at the bottom of the deck. I like that. 
All right, but what's come out here to clarify the Seven of Cups is the Ten of Cups, the Moon, and the Five of Cups. So, first of all, I don't think that the, the whatever this baggage is here for you, I don't think, I don't think you're seeing it clearly, or I don't. I, I, it's not what it seems. These situations that you've been dealing with in the past that have been hurtful, that have kind of put you down in a sense, they weren't meant to put you down. They, it's not, it's not, at, I, I, honestly, and I don't know what you're going through, but I really feel like at this point, it's not as bad as it seems. I feel like somebody is wrapped up in the emotions of it, the feelings of it. Not to say that your feelings are invalid. Never would I ever say that to you. But I, I do feel like with this Five of Cups energy, there's a little, there's a, there's a, there's a good amount of kind of, of like tr crying over spilled milk. Something is not as it seems here. Five of Cups and the moon. And I guess the biggest thing that I'm feeling from it is, Things are not as they seem in terms of it's not as bad as you might think. Or facing, to like literally turning around and facing all of this is not actually going to be as bad as you might be fearing. Facing whatever it is, whatever this baggage is, this Seven of Cups energy, the confusion, all the, all the different reasons that you're using to keep yourself in a Queen of Swords energy, to keep yourself closed off. They wouldn't be half, I literally just heard, they wouldn't be half as bad if you just looked at them. If you just, and, and, and all you have to do is just observe them for what they are. No judgment. This is not a situation in which you're, you're dragging yourself through the mud or you're walking on, you're dragging yourself through like the fires of hell through in judgment. No, that's not what we're talking about here. We're talking about facing these elements so that you can heal from them, so that you can understand what the situations were, what exactly happened. In some cases, I'm also hearing what happened minus the emotional details, minus how it may have made you feel at the moment, minus how you may have reacted in the moment, like whatever. That's not, that's not the point here. The point is what truly happened and what healing can come from just facing it, just looking at it, just observing it for what it truly is, right? That's the healing aspect that could come through here, but someone is, someone is too wrapped up in the emotions to really allow that to happen. And it's causing a detriment. And no, this is not something that's going to happen overnight. Again, look, justice will come when you take the steps slowly but surely. You handle it piece by piece. You go through each one of these seven cups or whatever, however many instances there are for you. You go through each and every one of them, one by one, step by step, until you've reached a sense of clarity. Okay? Now... We also have this pile here of the Nine of Swords, the Devil, Death, and the Ten of Cups. But what I really want to talk about, since it came out twice here, I want to talk about this Ten of Cups energy. What, and I, my question here, initially what I want to ask is, what is someone so afraid of when it comes to ultimate happiness? I feel like this actually may have something to do with family. Like there was a family situation that just was so toxic and just so destructive that now somebody kind of like runs away from it first chance that they get because they ain't trying to have that no more. And yet you still want to be happy though. And I guess I can say your happiness doesn't have to look like any sort of traditional family structure. Even a family structure doesn't have to look the way it did in the days of the destructive family structure you may have experienced in the past. You know what I mean? Like, it doesn't have to be like that. It doesn't have to be structured like that. It doesn't have to be set up like that. You know? I, 
I'm hearing needlessly running in fear and worry. Okay. What's this Ten of Cups here, please, Spirit? Yep. This is literally a situation in which uh, someone is saying, well, like it, someone is literally, literally pouring out these opportunities, four of cups. No, I'm not going to do that because... I'm get, I'd rather be happy here, but you're not happy here. This is not a happy energy. You may be calling it happiness because at least it's not that shit, but you're still miserable. Right? And you're still unhappy. Okay, maybe you're not miserable, but you're unhappy. And what you want is this. Ten of Cups. But somebody here just keeps pouring out those opportunities like now 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 and the universe keeps lining them up too you also have that with the page of swords and the world and the page of swords to me represents gemini energy uh is the inquis inquisitive one is the one that seeks information knowledge it's all about communication and learning If you would just seek the truth, the information, the knowledge here, you would end up being much happier because you would be able to put that cycle to rest, the world, and start a new chapter. Page of Pentacles is at the bottom of the deck. Yeah? Okay. All right. We're going to leave it there. Um, and I want to get us Oracle Guidance to close out this reading. And I'm being called towards the Lightworker Oracle. Okay. Five shuffles here. One. Two. Three, four, and five. All right, y'all. Closing Oracle Guidance for today's reading. We have card number two, second ray of wisdom. Second ray, the second ray of wisdom is a, is a consciousness of loving wisdom straight from the heart of the universe. It amplifies the magnetic power of attraction, empowering you to pull into your life all that is needed for your life's work. It brings the opportunity to heal, restore, and understand through the power of love and the light of ancient wisdom. The spiritual master known as the Buddha is with you now to help you fully receive and integrate the blessing of this ray of light from the universe. The second ray of wisdom is the energy of the open and loving heart of the universe. It is inclusive, drawing all things towards it with an invisible magnetism. It is gifted to you at this time to help you attract into your life the people, opportunities, and teachings that will help you succeed in your life mission. This ray will help you focus your consciousness in your heart. It will bring to consciousness any unresolved matters of the heart for healing. This includes not only issues of relationship, but also any issues around trusting your heart to lead you. This ray will help your heart in an affirming and nurturing way. The challenge with this ray, given that it is so magnetic and attractive, 
is learning to discern and say no when you need to. Imagine a fisherman who casts a very wide net and catches most of the ocean in it. Not everything is useful or even desired by the fisherman. While some things are gratefully accepted by the fisherman, other things are best returned to the ocean where they belong. Being able to trust in future abund abundance is important. You will not need to hold on to every opportunity, person, or situation out of fear of loss or lack. Instead, you are learning to live in true abundance and flow. Practice feeling comfortable in letting go, as well as receiving. Trust that the universe has all that you want and need in unlimited supply. The universe will truly provide for you, dear child of the light. This is a very different way of thinking to how most humans are conditioned from an early age, but it's never too late to change one's mind and open one's heart to a more loving, abundant, and enjoyable way to live. When the Buddha comes into your world, he brings the gift of wisdom. That includes openness to all that is without judgment. This might be the struggle that will eventually be revealed as a blessing in disguise. It might be the challenge that causes you to grow into readiness for the next phase of your divine life mission. Finally, as the second ray of wisdom relates particularly to teachers and education, you are encouraged to trust that you have a message to share that is helpful and educational for others. Whether your involvement in education and teaching is formal or less obvious, you are encouraged to honor the energy of the teacher in your life. In some way, your sole purpose likely involves helping others to learn through wisdom and love. Final message I just got is let yourself be open. Ain't nothing to it but to do it. <laughs> Yikes. Okay. Anyway, there you have it, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope this was helpful for you. I love you all so very much. I hope you have a fantastic weekend, and I look forward to connecting with you again for our next cup of coffee Monday morning. Yeah? Take care. Mm -hmm. Bye. <laughs>